Welcome to the congregation of Yahweh. We're here on Yahweh's Sabbath day. Greetings to those on the internet and those that aren't watching live today. Um, today's message is, is going to be covering uh, the spring feast that we're about to enter into, Passover, and unleavened, and, and cover uh, not only the, uh, the physical significance of those things, but also the spiritual significance. And uh, most of the, of the mainstream uh, religious circles that call themselves followers of the Messiah don't have anything to do with uh, these feast days, nor do they understand the significance of those. Those things have been pushed aside, much like uh, the understanding of who the covenant people are has also been pushed aside. Um, and the history of, of what led into uh, the Egyptian captivity the deliverance from that captivity, uh, the Passover and unleavened were a remembrance of those things. Uh, the Passover lamb and the deliverance from Egypt, the blood on the doorpost, that had nothing to do with the forgiveness of sins. The Passover lamb had nothing to do with the forgiveness of sins. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, that's a, a debate between people that don't accept Yeshua Messiah. They said, well, you know, he's supposed to be the forgiveness of sins and the Passover lamb. Passover didn't have anything to do with forgiveness, and that's right. The fall feast and the atonement, things like that, that's the removal, the forgiveness of sins. But just as Israel was to remember their deliverance from the slavery of sin, the Messiah, our Passover, delivered us from the slavery of sin. It was bondage. And uh, we'll go through not only the, the Old Testament scriptures, but some Messianic scriptures that show that his blood was the deliverance. And in the future, the fall feasts will be the completion, the removal of sin. But I'm going to start off in uh, Exodus chapter 12. Starting in verse 1 of chapter 12. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs shall they eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire his head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof and you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning and that which remaineth of it until the morning you shall burn with fire and thus shall you eat it with your loins girded your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it in haste it is Yahweh's Passover for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the mighty ones of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am Yahweh. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are, and when I see the blood I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you, when I smite the land of Egypt and this day shall be unto you for a memorial 
and you shall keep it a feast to Yahweh throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. So based off of this verse, there is a people that is supposed to be keeping this feast as a memorial throughout their generations and forever. Somebody should be keeping it. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And this word, put away leaven out of your houses, it actually means things that are leavened. And in the first day there shall be an holy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. And you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, you shall observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. Again, forever. Um, in, the four, in the first month, on the 14th day of the month at even, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 1 and 20th day of the month at even. Seven days there shall be no leaven found in your houses for whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. You shall eat nothing leavened in all your habitations, shall you eat unleavened bread. Um, then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families. And kill the Passover, and you should take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For Yahweh will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he sees the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, Yahweh will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. And you shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. And it shall come to pass when you become to the land which Yahweh will give you according as he hath promised that he shall keep that, excuse me, that you shall keep this service. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, what mean you by this service? That you shall say, It is the sacrifice of Yahweh's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses and the people bowed the head and worshipped. And the children of Israel went away and did as Yahweh had commanded Moses and Aaron. And it came to pass that at midnight Yahweh smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go serve Yahweh as you have said. And also take your flocks and your herds as you have said, and be gone and bless me also. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, We be all dead men. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they bowed, excuse me, they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And Yahweh gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent to them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children 
and a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, even very much cattle. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any victual. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years, and it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the selfsame day it came to pass that all the hosts of Yahweh went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed unto Yahweh for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is that night of Yahweh to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. And Yahweh said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof, but every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and an hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten, Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall you break a bone thereof. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover to Yahweh, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One law shall be to him that is homeborn and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. Thus did all the children of Israel, as Yahweh commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass the selfsame day that Yahweh did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. So that's the story of the institution of the Passover. And uh, over and over it says that it was to be done forever and it's also done as a memorial in remembrance of this that happened. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to look at just a few verses in uh, chapter 13 of, and verse 3. It says, And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day. And again, that's the purpose of uh, the Passover and unleavened as a memorial Verse 7 says, Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee, neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. We'll talk about the significance of the removal of the leaven and not letting it be seen here in just a minute. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 18 Deuteronomy 7 and 18 says, uh, Thou shalt not be afraid of them, but shalt well remember what Yahweh thy Elohim did unto Pharaoh and unto all Egypt. Remember these things. Deuteronomy chapter 16. And verse 3 says, Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it, Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith, even the bread of affliction, for thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember the day when thou came forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. Um, and five and six, verse five. Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover within any of the gates which Yahweh thy Elohim giveth thee, but at the place which Yahweh thy Elohim shall choose to place his name, there thou shalt sacrifice the Passover at even at the going down of the sun at the season that thou camest forth out of Egypt. That shows the place where it was to be done. And uh, Passover was the only uh, feast that was given an extra day if, if someone had missed it. And that's in Numbers chapter 9. Numbers chapter 9. 
and verse 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt. So this shows that in the second year they were keeping the Passover. Uh, let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season in the 14th day of this month at even. You shall keep it in his appointed season according to all the rites of it and according to all the ceremonies thereof shall you keep it. And I'm going to skip down to verse 6. And there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. And those men said unto him, We are defiled by the dead body of a man. Wherefore are we kept back that we may not offer an offering of Yahweh in his appointed season among the children of Israel? And Moses said unto them, Stand still, and I will hear what Yahweh will command concerning you. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, if, if any man of you or of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, or be in a journey afar off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto Yahweh. The fourteenth day of the second month at even, they shall keep it and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it unto the morning, nor break any bone of it according to all the ordinances of the Passover. They shall keep it. But the man that is clean and is not in a journey and forbears to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people. So we see that it was very important that uh, they be there for the Passover. Now let's look at a few uh, uh, scriptures concerning our slavery or bondage to sin and being set free from that slavery. I'm going to go to uh, John chapter 8. And starting in verse 30. And as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Yeshua to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Knowing the truth would give them freedom. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, You shall be made free? Yeshua answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever commits sin is a slave or servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Going over to uh, Romans chapter 6. Starting in verse 12 of chapter 6 in Romans. Let not sin therefore reign or rule in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lusts thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto Elohim as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto Elohim. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Certainly not. Know you not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But Elohim be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from a heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants 
of righteousness over here in uh, Romans chapter 8, starting in verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Messiah Yeshua, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Messiah Yeshua hath made me free from the law of sin and death. All humanity is in bondage, enslaved to the law of sin and death, enslaved to the inclination to do the wrong thing. And in Messiah, through his blood, we can be set free from that old man, that bondage. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, Yahweh sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Why? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, bondage, but after the spirit, freedom. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Uh, let's look over here in First Peter. Uh, we read about the Passover that it was supposed to be without spot, without blemish, the first year. I and mean, Peter kind of words this here and, and talks about being redeemed by his blood. That's First Peter chapter 1 and verse 18. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Messiah as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Uh, so here it says that we were redeemed not by gold and silver, but by the precious blood of the Messiah as of a lamb who did not have blemish or spot. Uh, Revelations chapter 1 also talks about a redemption by his blood, being redeemed, being purchased. 1 and verse, Revelations 1 and verse 5, And from Yeshua Messiah, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto Elohim and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Uh, chapter 5. Chapter 5 and verse 9. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to Elohim by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Uh, let's look at a, a few illustrations on the significance of leaven in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And uh, there's one positive uh, significance of leaven spoken of in the New Testament. It's talking about the kingdom of heaven is like leaven uh, that a woman uh, put in it, and it spread. And the other ones, all the other illustrations, the, the symbolic illustrations of leaven are false doctrine, hypocrisy, sin, rebellion. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, starting in verse 1, it says... Uh, it is re reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such fornication as is not so much as named amongst the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. And you are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily as absent in body but present in spirit have judged already as though I were present concerning him that hath so done this deed. In the name of our master Yeshua Messiah when you are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our master Yeshua Messiah to deliver such an one unto Satan 
for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the master Yeshua. That's a very uh, strange verse to deliver someone to Satan. Well, how was that done? They were talking about getting this person out of the congregation that was living like this, that was not uh, repentant, and let Satan have his way for a while, and hopefully he'll be saved. And, and on a, a broader scale, sometimes uh, you've got to cut people off and let the world have their way with them. Uh, let, you know, especially people that are involved in, in the bondage of, of uh, drugs and different types of addictions, sometimes you've got to stop feeding that habit and giving them the things they need. Let, let the world handle them. I know there was a time for me personally when my parents just had to completely cut me off and I needed to be in the situation that I was in. I needed to be turned over to Satan and, and I was getting roughed up out there and I needed that. Sometimes when we go to people's aid too early, uh, they're not getting what they need. Anyway, I kind of went off on a little side note there. But this person needed to be put out, excommunicated from the congregation, not only to bring them to repentance, but also that that sin, that leaven, wouldn't spread and contaminate the rest of the bunch. Uh, verse 6, your glorying is not good. Know you not that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven that you may be a new lump. As you are unleavened, for even Messiah, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world or with covetous or extortioners or with idolaters, for then must you needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such and one know not to eat. It seems from the wording of this chapter here that they're coming up on a time of feast keeping. He says in verse 8, let's keep the feast. But he's saying we need to cleanse the body before we keep this feast. And it says don't even eat with such a person. What it seems to be referencing, if a person calls themselves a brother, do not eat this feast if that brother, with that brother, if he be a fornicator, adulterer, railer, etc. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not you judge them that are within? But them that are without, Elohim judges. Therefore put away from amongst yourselves that wicked person. Judge matters in the body. And uh, that also kind of alludes to uh, Colossians chapter 2 when it says, uh, let no one judge you but the body of Messiah. We judge matters within, let Yahweh judge the world. Um, another illustration in Matthew chapter 16 on leaven. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 11. Um, let me back it up just a little bit. Sorry. Uh, chapter 16 and verse 5. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Yeshua said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. It's interesting that he that it's, it's written like this, it says they forgot to take bread. And while they had forgotten to take bread, he says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned amongst themselves saying, is it because we have taken no bread? Which when Yeshua perceived, he said unto them, O you of little faith, why reason ye amongst yourselves? Because 
you have brought no bread. Do you not yet understand? Neither remember the five loaves and the 5,000 and how many baskets you took up. Neither the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many baskets you took up. How is it that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understand they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And there's another reference in here when he's referring, when he's referring to the doctrine, he also says their hypocrisy. And over here in Galatians, uh, which I, I won't go there, but just for the sake of time, the whole book of Galatians is referencing a different gospel, a different message that was creeping in. And this, this false doctrine that was creeping in was that you have to keep all the law and be circumcised and do all the customs before you can be saved. And, of course, the conclusion of that book was you're saved by grace through faith and not by works of the law, but it does not negate his instructions. It does not do away with them. But there were Judaizers coming in and, and trying to say that these nations that were coming in, they needed to do everything first. And then Galatians says concerning this doctrine, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Um, I ran into something. This is just on the context of Passover and unleavened. 